the zombie hunter stealthily closes in on his undead target, we witness a remarkable display of patience and precision. Reminiscent of the great- Oh my gosh! The first Dead Island from 2011 was underwhelming, leaving me with memories of an incredible trailer that was followed up by a mediocre open world game with lots of bugs and problems. We talked through a gameplay video released by the developers and even that didn't fully sell me. But then, I got my hands on Dead Island 2 and got to try it for myself. Cut to a few hours in and it was probably around the time that I double foot drop kicked a zombie out of a third story hotel window that I realized that maybe I'd been wrong about Dead Island 2 all along. As shitty as you could be, I still loved you, LA. So hang on, am I saying that Dead Island 2 is yet another surprise gem in this already packed 2023 game lineup? Damn right, bless his rotten soul. I'm Nick from What's Good, let's take a look. Dead Island 2 has been through the type of development hell that most games never recover from, moving through more than 4 studios over the span of 10 years. So it's even more of a surprise to discover that Dambuster Studios, the people responsible for the so-so Homefront The Revolution, have pulled this off. There are some familiarities to the original Dead Island, but the sequel feels better in pretty much every way. Considering that it's a game that relies heavily on fun with physics and procedural systems, I also can't believe how incredibly polished and bug free my experience is. The game looks pretty decent when you're running around on the outside, but I was absolutely blown away by the photorealistic graphics when in and around the building. Look at this. Just look at this. This is insane. The lighting is incredible and there's so much detail, which is impressive because the image quality running on Xbox Series X looks sharp and detailed, and I never noticed any slowdown in normal gameplay, and I've been told it's just as silky smooth on the PS5 as well. Even when testing on a launch Xbox One running on a 720p Sony Bravia, I experienced consistent performance and great looking visuals running at 30fps, considering it was running on a console from nearly 10 years ago. If this game gets a photo mode, it's going to blow people away. Some of the in-gameplay screenshots I took in this game genuinely look like photographs. Future's now, old man. It's impressive to say the least. Let me go talk to them. Are, are you sure? Take the gun! Nah, you need it more than me. So, while the story itself isn't all that interesting, a lot is told through the quirky characters that you meet, as well as ongoing bits and bobs from your own character's mouth. But my video missing that something something to bring it all together. The premise is that after you get bitten you discover that you're immune and decide to alert the authorities so that your special blood can possibly help with a vaccine. Doesn't this sound- Where's the last of us? <laughs> so maybe the main story isn't the game's strongest feature. The environmental storytelling however is just fantastic. Simply paying attention to your surroundings while wandering around a fancy house in Bel Air can tell you so much about its occupants and the events that took place there. And there's a little dose of zombie movie references too. There are so many of these environmental storytelling moments, but here's a simple example of a small scene that I loved that tells a complete story in just a few moments. There are some slight differences and changes to dialogue depending on the character you select and their quips are different. And I actually like my character and his upbeat approach to the so-called Zompocalypse. Hello? Did someone require Zompocalypse survival services? <laughs> oh, good. But I can't speak for all the rest. Dead Island 2 smartly doesn't overdo its humour either and shows some restraint. The characters you meet in the world are mostly completely self-absorbed and aren't even fully aware that they're in something this goofy. The dark humour actually sells itself pretty well as a result. When it comes to getting down and dirty, Dead Island 2 is all about talking, fighting, looting, questing, upgrading, levelling and moving on to the next location. Ah, blissful suburb. Unlike the original game's full open world, the sequel provides a host of different smallish open but contained areas of Los Angeles, including Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Venice Beach, a movie studio, some in-betweener sections and more. What I really realized is that the smaller open world totally works for me. It has the benefits of open world exploration but with much higher detail and less faffing around and also it gives you some more of the focus provided by a linear action game. You're also well rewarded for exploring, either finding loot or stumbling on a fantastic easter egg or pay off from a comment made earlier in the game. I desperately want to show some of them to you, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone. There's also a bunch of side quests that you can take on, and they're pretty fun, and also give you reasons to go back and explore areas that you've already moved through. And what's cool is that areas alternate between day and night sometimes, which gives them a whole different vibe. 
Something that's also super important to Dead Island is the combat, because if that doesn't work, the whole concept doesn't work. The good news is that the combat is incredibly satisfying, with a procedural gore system called Flesh being the star of the show. It's so gruesome, but it's so impressive, with encounter after encounter enriching your life with disgusting new ways to observe how high velocity objects can collide with the human body. I feel like you need an example. You've made it this far, but if you're bothered by sensitive content, I'd look away now. The weight and threat of the weapons in this game feels massively satisfying and mostly using melee weapons only works because they have such a good feeling to them. Thanks to the upgrade and leveling system you can also get a bit creative by reinforcing weapons to hit with more force or give them different types of damage through crazy workbench upgrades. You get to bring your ve Great vengeance and furious anger upon the zombie hordes with everything from garden rakes, pipe wrenches, baseball bats, sledgehammers, samurai swords and more. Yeah. A host of ranged weapons unlocks later on like rifles, nail guns, shotguns and more, but it doesn't just suddenly transform into a shooter where you leave the melee combat weapons behind, and I really appreciated that. Something else I appreciated about the game is that when you die, you respawn and not reload, allowing for continued attempts at scenarios or enemies, and containers and loot also respawn so that you can come back to them later. It's clear here that unlike being like a survival horror, the focus here is more on fun. And combined with skill cards and equipment called curveballs that range from makeshift ninja stars to full-on pipe bombs, molotov cocktails and zombie bait, you're able to put together a mixture of skills and weapons to suit your ideal style of zombie murder. For a bit of added spice, you get some special powers from your zombie infection. You'll need to have your socks pulled up if you're going to take on everything that's thrown at you, because there's a pretty solid variety of enemy types, such as slow walkers, nimble runners, military grenadiers that just like explode when you damage them, big beefcake gym bros, bloated puke spewers, walking pus balls and a whole lot of other disgusting things. Dead Island 2 really is an RPG light, with item and skill management and upgrades being deep enough to get into, but shallow enough to not bog down the action experience. And the same goes down for the environment stuff, which is not too deep, but it's enough to keep you having fun with what's around you. It feels like it knows exactly what it wants to be and it has the confidence to be there. On that note, a returning feature is co-op. While it was fun, I did run into a few issues when joining someone else's game. I experienced low performance when joining my co-op buddy, which is a bit of a downer and I had a permanent Wi-Fi icon right in the middle of my screen, which I couldn't turn off, which was annoying. But this might be something limited to areas without local servers or maybe sorted out in a patch. I also had a few issues where I was unable to pick up weapons or interact with objects in the world. But you know what? Beating up zombies with friends is always a great time, and I quite like that loot drops were also splits so that everyone feels like they're getting some goodies. However, this time around, there's a maximum of three players instead of four, which is a trend that I just don't understand or agree with these days. I'm lucky enough to have two solid four-player co-op groups that I play with frequently, and everyone's always bummed when a cool upcoming game ends up being three player instead of four. It's really annoying, but I digest. What's more, you can only join players who are similar level than you or lower. There's no auto balance system or ability to create a temporary character. And I feel like at this stage, we need easy ways to just drop in with friends and play. Scale us down, let us make a quick guest character. It's 2023, it needs to be as easy as possible to let people just have some fun together in your game. Not everyone has time to match their levels or make every single multiplayer session. I got shit to do today, what the f Dead Island 2 is obviously not the only game that's guilty of this but I'm using it as my punching bag right now nonetheless. Overall, Dead Island 2 is a big surprise. I first loaded it up expecting a mediocre experience that ticked the boxes enough to get it out the door, but instead, I found myself having a great time slicing, dicing, burning and bashing zombies while meeting strange and interesting characters as I rummaged through Houses of the Rich and Famous and got to see what movie lots look like. It's a great single player experience. Multiplayer has potential, but it needs the most work right now. Dead Island 2 isn't going to steal any crowns from the heavy hitters coming out this year, but in a year so jam-packed with incredible games, it can hold its head up high. High enough for me to put a blade right through its face.
So if you like me weren't really interested in Dead Island 2, you might want to give it a second look. I went in lukewarm and while it isn't perfect, I left feeling like I was on fire. It constantly managed to put a big smile on my face and that's all that matters. I had a lot of fun making this video and if you had fun watching it or found it useful, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Before you go, head to the comment sections and let us know which zombie murdering simulator has been your favorite so far. I keep telling people that World War Z co-op is underplayed and underrated, so if you haven't checked that out, you really should. But let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Just sink their teeth into us. You're screwed, man. I think the survival of the human race may depend on the blood in my veins. Yeah, yeah man, no sh-